And when I finished, I finished around verse 24 or 25. So I'm going to go back and start uh, in verse 23 tonight, and I'm going to read to the end of the chapter. And uh, I'll, golly, I don't have very much time. But I'm going to give you a few thoughts. I hope they'll be a blessing to you. So I'm going to begin in uh, verse 23 of Psalm 37. The steps of a good man are ordered or directed by the Lord. And look at this. And he delighteth in his way. I sent that verse to somebody that I know is going through a very difficult time in their life. And I wanted to assure them that God was still in control. Even though sometimes it doesn't look like it is or doesn't look like it's in our favor, but God is watching over you and he's caring for you every step of the way. The steps of a good man, and I'm going to put the word woman in there, the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord and they will delight in their way. Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. That's a, that's a promise. Now listen. Everybody along the path of this life will have problems. They will stumble. They will have difficulties. And listen, even a good man, Russ, will fall sometimes. But what is the promise is that I'm not going to let you completely be destroyed. I'm going to hold on to you. You will not utterly be destroyed. Uh, whereas, we will read in a moment, the wicked person stumbles and falls, never to get on their feet again. If you were to give a testimony tonight, if I said, give a testimony of how God has picked you up a time or two in your life, everybody would have a testimony, I think, of how that, yeah, and it doesn't make any and this is very, very important too, Maddie Bell. It doesn't make any difference if you caused the fall, if you did something that, you know, wasn't necessarily pleasing to the Lord. He's still going to hold on to you. He loves you. And you can go to him no matter what. You can go to the Lord. He doesn't stand up there and point a finger at us and say, I told you so, I told you so. Not like our relatives do, <laughs> you know. Our relatives, they don't, they don't mind pointing a finger, telling you, I told you so. And, and maybe we did, maybe we didn't know, but God's not that way. God just simply loves you and cares about you so much. Isn't that beautiful, though? Amen. Oh, though he be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Now, here's one here. Now, this is an observation of David. I think this is important. This is not a law. This is not a law. This is what David is saying that I have observed in my lifetime. Because, let me tell you something. Through the years, good people have suffered. Good people have gone hungry. Look, if you lived in a country where there was tyranny, and especially where there was tyranny against religion, and there are countries that prohibit religious gatherings, and if they know that you're a Christian or if they know that you're a believer, they will bring persecution against you. So people have suffered, but David is saying in this next verse, for him, I've never seen this. And that's what, we, that's what he's saying here. And I will say this, the righteous certainly still have God's help all along the way, and in the midst of storms and in the midst of difficulties, God is still there. God is still there. Look what he says in verse 25. I have been young and now am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. David's making an observation there. He's saying, you know, in my lifetime, I don't know how old David is here when he writes this, but we know David dies at the age of 70, and so we don't know how old he is when he writes this, but he makes the observation, you know, uh, I was young, now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Oh, that's so beautiful. Look what he says, verse 26. He is ever merciful 
and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Now, he's talking about the man that we talked about up in verse 23, the man and woman. The steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord, and he lieth in the way. Here's what he says in verse 26. He is ever merciful, or she, they're merciful. You know, you as a Christian, you're the kindest, most gentle, most loving, most understanding, most non-judgmental, and merciful per people in the f on the face of the earth. Now, are you perfect? Of course not. None of us would dare say that. But overall, God's people are the greatest, most wonderful. I'd rather be associated with them than anyone else. Amen. And I'm glad to be a part of a church where the gospel is still being preached. I'm thankful to be a part of that. He, the person whose steps are ordered by the Lord, is ever merciful. That's what he's saying. He's talking to you. He's talking to you, Velma. He's saying, Velma is full of mercy. She's always kind. That's what he's saying. He's saying that to each and every one of you. That's what's being, that's what David wrote. You're, you're merciful. You're not judgmental. You can be judgmental, and you, you, you have a right to have some kind of judgment. I'm not saying that you can't have judgment, but you're not judgmental in your attitude. And that, that's a pretty big deal. So he is ever merciful, and look, and lendeth. Remember in the verses before, there were, the evil man would borrow, but he would never repay. Remember that? We, we talked that in the early part of Psalm 37. The evil man would borrow, and he had no intentions of repaying what he borrowed. Whereas a good man, uh, he may have to borrow money, but his intentions are to repay it because uh, I mean, he, he has the right attitude. But a good man like yourself, I'd say most of you have the wherewithal to help other people. That's what I would say. And if you, you know, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. We, you, and by the way, let me say this to you. Each and every one of you are rich. You are rich beyond measure. And it may not necessarily simply be with physical things and physical bank account, but you're rich. You're rich in spiritual things. And what, what is the greatest need of man? Is it a new car? I mean, we all might want a new car. But don't you think it is the man's soul? For if a man should gain the whole world and lose his own soul, he is most miserable. Well, you know that. You see, you already know that truth. So you're merciful. You lend to those in need. If you see somebody who needs something and you have the wherewithal to fill that need, I'm going to say for the most part, most of you would fill that need. I'm not saying necessarily, necessarily sacrifice for everybody, but if you knew somebody that maybe needed some groceries, I would say everybody in this room would say, I'm going to go to the Walmart or I'm going to go to the store, get that person some groceries. Because it's in your heart. You, you, that's who you are. That's the kind of person you are. And I like to be associated with you all. Then he's, he's given a warning. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. You know, you're the kind of people who are... You're the kind of people that every city, every nation, every country needs. Because you are what Jesus said you are. You are the salt of the earth. You make the world around you a better place. And I'm here to tell you that Richland Hills is a better city because Messiah Baptist Church sits right in the middle of it. It's a better place. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. I'll, I'll just give you this because... I went a little bit long in all the other things, but I'm going to tell you, your family, 
your family is a better family because of you. You're the salt of the earth. You are the kind of people that holds things together. Uh, I mean, I just, uh, uh, the, the scriptures tell me what kind of people you are. And I don't know about you, but I like being around those kind of people. And I'm going to stop right there and I'll start next week because I just, uh, I just don't have time really. I don't want to run you too late. But uh, one more thing. I, I'll give you one more thing. One more thing. I'm going to give you what I'm going to give you. Okay. David, I'm going to give it to you, okay? Because what I'm talking about, Jesus, Jesus talked about it. He talked about it in Matthew chapter 5. Here's what he said. The meek shall inherit the earth. And that's true, David. We don't have to fight and angry, be angry and scream and holler and try to straighten everything out. The meek might inherit the earth. Shall. 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 Thank you. I want you to straighten me out when I say it wrong. The meek, the kind, the merciful, the ones who have good judgment, the ones who have common sense, the ones who hold communities together. That's who you are. The meek shall inherit the earth. Jesus said it and David is teaching it there in that psalm. He's teaching that truth. All right, I'm going to stop right there and we'll take time to pray and thank you again.